Hey, Bitcoin and crypto traders, we've got a lot to talk about. I meant to do a video earlier today, but stock market got wild. The good news is we get to share the twilight hour together. Before we get into it, we're running a holiday promotion with the alert system, TraderPro.com. You got to guess the price of where Bitcoin's going to be at the end of the year. And there is a tweet to retweet and you reply your guess to it. And I will put that link to that tweet in the description of the video. So we'll start it off with the dollar and the dollar actually made a notable bull move today. This is the hourly time frame, and this five hour period is one of the most bullish five hour periods that we've seen on the dollar in the last couple of weeks. That it was one other period where it was similar. So that was notable and it's a solid green day for the dollar fending off a daily bear flag. If we break the high of the bounce 91.24, it'll be the most notable bounce that the dollar has seen again in pretty much a month at this point. So keeping an eye on that, and it's also notable because the tech sector in the stock world sold off pretty hard today. In my opinion, the dollar bounce had something to do with that. It was a part of reasoning, also definitely overdue for consolidation coming off the all-time high. But we saw that pullback, and just a, a point, long story short, this Bitcoin bounce is extremely impressive. It's pretty much best case scenario as far as what the bulls want to see on a bear break. We had a very clear bear break. We'll talk about that in just a second, but... It's just an extra added showing by the bulls to be doing this while the dollar is bouncing. So Bitcoin on the daily time frame got real tight. We had our high and low. We were just watching the range of the December 1st candle and the bears took over. When we last left off, the last video that I covered was break is imminent. So knew we were gonna see a volume and volatility spike. And what stood out is we were right here and we were looking at this and I said, if the bulls can change the hourly trend, we'll have a new daily higher low and the range will continue to tighten for another couple days, potentially, I think I said 36 hours. Obviously we didn't change the hourly trend and we just kept rejecting from the hourly 12 period EMA. And as, as soon as that started showing up, it just felt more and more like we were about to see a bear break because the bulls couldn't get over this resistance level. And then here was our dump down we took out that support level that was down at 18,615. And then not only that, we took out 18,500 support, which was here. And then we took out 18,100. So a lot of stop losses, pretty much if you put a stop loss based on a level that formed in the last week, you were stopped out on this pullback. So now let's talk about the bounce. As soon as we lose that daily support, we zoom out, we say, okay, weekly consolidation is underway. We know we're overdue. We've been setting a weekly higher low every single week for the last nine weeks. That pattern has broken. What do we get when we have a confirmed downtrend and a bear break and no follow through? It means zoom out and look for a potential bull flag. This right now is a potential weekly bull flag and the burden of proof is on the bears to prove to us that this is not a weekly bull flag. Because obviously going with the trend, it's a weekly bull flag. So I would need to see a drop down, oh, 16, the mid 16,000s would need to be hit for me to be looking at that to set up a weekly equilibrium. Because again, at that point we go from, does this consolidation favor continuation or does the consolidation is it significant enough to then favor a lower high as the most likely scenario once a higher low is set? We know we're going to set a higher low unless the sky falls in Bitcoin. We're going to set a higher low. It's just whether it's going to be a bull flag or more significant to then shape up the equilibrium. So one level that we gauge that, I personally, just from looking at so many charts, it's just experience. I can look at a chart and know whether it's more likely to be a bull flag or form a lower high. But if I needed some kind of measurement, I would be using the fibs. And again, we're watching how much pullback are we seeing? And we're not even close. 16,100 is the 3A2. So we aren't even close to pulling back significantly from the size of the move that we've seen. So that's the long story short. The burden of proof is back on the bears. Look at this bounce that we saw. We had that hourly EMA 12. We got over it consolidated for a higher low, just broke resistance to a higher high, four hour time frame. You could call that a little trend change. I would then just zoom out to the 12 hour and scout a 12 hour lower high, anything under 19,400. Very clear four hour downtrend, tightening range, bear break. We are just looking for a lower high. So again, I say the bears need to prove it. They can, I mean, we can see a, a 12 hour lower high and lower low. That is a possibility, 
But if we're just looking at the size of the bounce at this point due to the size or compared to the size of the pullback, I would say, let's see, 19,400. Let's do some rough math. Pulled back $1,800. And at this point, we have bounced more than 50% retracement. So very solid bounce. And I'm going to be watching for a 12-hour lower high, a 12-hour higher low, and now probably tightening within this range into the weekend. So that's what I'm watching for. What would throw a red or throw a wrench in that plan? It would be in once we top out increasing bear volume. If we start to see on the hourly and four hour time frame notable increasing bear volume, then we could drop to that lower low. So we definitely want to have game plans in both scenarios. I was going to bed last night and I actually set my alarm to wake up at three in the morning. Sweetie Pants right now wants to be let inside, so she's making as much noise as she can in the background. But I woke myself up at three in the morning and we hadn't broken at that point. So I didn't place any bids, wasn't worth it to me. And I just, I guess I must've woke up at two. I woke up right before it happened. I would've bought, I would've scaled in a little bit if I were awake. But at this point, I'm just remaining patient. I've got my long-term no touch. I've got my small re-entries on my swing positions and I am in no rush. So I would have entered if we had a clear little four hour higher low, that wasn't enough pullback for me. I would have scaled in a little bit of an entry to play off that recent low. At this point, I'm just watching that 12 hour in daily. If I don't add anything from here and we break 20,000, I am a-okay with that. I'm still gonna be real happy. So again, my mistakes being in my conservative trading style these days will be leaving money on the table, not giving it back. Let's go on to some other coins. We got. The dominant share for Bitcoin rejected from resistance, and it's more of the usual. As we pulled back, this chart was going up, meaning the altcoins are dropping harder than Bitcoin. And then we rejected from this resistance, and we started pulling back on this chart, which shows us the altcoins are bouncing more. So again, they're just leveraged versions of Bitcoin where they're pulling back and bouncing more, and they've got more volatility in both directions. So depending on what your risk tolerance is and what you're looking for, you're either going to be more interested in altcoins or more interested in Bitcoin. ETH USD, bear break on the daily with no bear follow through, weekly time frame, bull flag. Burden of proof is on the bears. Look at the grind of this weekly EMA 12 support on three distinct different occasions for many candles. That's impressive. And that's a key level that we're gonna be watching here. So again, it is a bull flag unless we significantly follow through for the bears with lower lows. 12 hour looks pretty clear on ETH. Anything under 607 is a 12 hour lower high. And if from this daily bear break, if bulls regain a 12 hour trend, it'll just be everything that I said to start this video about the impressive strength in the bounce magnified. It'll be very impressive. ETH BTC, still tight sideways, not giving us any information that the dominance chart did not just give us. And we would need a clear break of this tightening range for it to mean anything to us. XRP USD, so bear break here of one level. We did not take out the other support level of 459. And I like the 12 hour for everybody. I'm glad I do these videos because I was not watching the 12 hour chart until now. So we're looking at 628, lower high compared to that level. Need that 12 hour trend change. It's a very clear 12 hour downtrend over the last eight days. Just watching to see if it changes. Weekly consolidation, not as clean a potential bull flag. Why? The ranges are so much more significant. So let's do the FIB retracement from here. And we've already pulled back 50%. It's a very big difference in the size of the retracement that Bitcoin has seen. Granted, the, the XRP move has only taken place over a few weeks. The Bitcoin move is over months and months, but that's a 50% retracement. It was a nice bounce right off of that 50. 12 hour is our guide. Sushi daily EMA 12 still holding. Four hour trend change back to the bulls is needed for our daily higher low to be set. So once this bounce tops out, we look for the higher low. Watch for the confirmed trend change. 250 is a key resistance. And we would have to fail to change the four hour trend into tomorrow to be at risk of losing this daily EMA 12 and potentially losing the daily uptrend. So if we can change that four hour trend from here, bulls keep that control. YFI USDT weekly is consolidating, 
And you can form a little weekly bull flag off of that, the size of that move. Same thing, 12 hour. Clear downtrend has to change it back to the bulls. So a lot of people want me to cover link and I understand that, but I can't because it's just, it's just weaker. It's been so much weaker for so long. Again, it doesn't mean we're falling asleep on it. Every you know week I'll make, I'll talk about it in the video where I'm just saying we're not falling asleep on it. We're watching this falling wedge. We're patiently waiting. It can tighten up for another couple weeks even. It's worth watching for because we are scouting a monthly high or low. Absolutely. It's just not ready yet. The monthly EMA 12 is here. Obviously a huge retracement, but tons of space still for that higher low. We're watching it. Just like LTC BTC, we were watching this weekly falling wedge and then LTC BTC got that spike. And just the importance of zooming out because I looked at this chart right before recording this video and I was astounded at how insignificant that bounce was on LTC BTC yet how significant it felt in the short term when that two weeks when that was happening. So it's always important to check the bigger picture for that reason. Best case for the bulls on LTC, BTC is back test and then confirm a weekly trend change, which we have not done yet. We broke the weekly lower highs. Now we need the higher low and higher high to follow through. So again, I don't care about altcoins where their Bitcoin pairing is weak and in a downtrend because there is better attention placed elsewhere and it's just wasted opportunity cost. If your funds are sitting in a weaker coin, it's opportunity cost for the bigger gains on all the stronger coins. So I hope you're well. It's gonna get interesting over the next 24, 48 hours. We'll be watching that 12 hour trend change attempt. Need that, it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a couple days. We need a higher low and higher high. But overall, impressive bounce. Lack of bear follow through. Burden of proof on the bears. Do good things. Have a good day. See you soon. All right, so here's your mystery. We got this feeder where there's nothing around it to climb up or anything. Fairly clean water. That's mostly rainwater. I clean it out every week or two. There were a couple worms in it last time I cleaned it out. Okay, no big deal. Is this, are these worms coming out of bird poop? That's one, two, three, four, five worms. What looks like would be some poop. There's no other way they're getting up in here. They look like earthworms, but they could be a tapeworm. I am baffled. This dude's huge. He's the big daddy. Planted some bulbs and I don't know what they are, so we'll have to see.